unicorns are going to be all over the place and you don't really know what they're going to do. We revealed some of our picks, but it was uh, not all of them. Whoa, 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 Shaco is locked in. We share a lot of common picks, so we might fight over this. Fox just goes wild and they manage to get a triple. The people that say we only have one strategy and one place are the type of people who are always looking for something to moan about and point out. SK champion pool is pretty deep as well, so we definitely have to be careful with this. Me, myself, I'm not afraid of pulling or anything. Come on! I think they'll be surprised, like I might bring out some new picks as well. We want to win as much as we can and win as hard as we can. Finishing first would be really great for us. We are like one of the three teams that beat them, so I think we can really do it and we can go to the finals. If we got number one, this play would be really, really great. Well, we just want to win the whole FPS. <laughs> yes! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the European League Championship Series Spring Semi-Finals, broadcasting to you live from Berlin, Germany. The stage is set here for our last best of five before we pick up shop and head to Spain. And just moments ago, we saw the fans getting underway outside hype for SK Gaming versus Unicorns of Love with their signs. Unicorns of Love themselves starting in the building with their interesting picks in mind. I do hope we'll see a lot of that. And SK Gaming setting up on stage, making sure everything's working properly to get off those picks and win those games for them. And there are the fans in the stand. Can't wait to get the action underway. Hello, I'm Efe Shok Zaportra. And joining me on the analyst desk today is coach for the Copenhagen Wolves and wannabe medical professional Carl Dentis Cray, as well as his partner in crime and coach for Gambit Gaming, Jordan Leviathan Thwaites. Very good to have you gentlemen here once again, Dentis, and joined by Leviathan as well. And with their win yesterday, Fnatic are the first team in the spring finals where they'll face the winner of today's best of five semifinal. H2K drops out to the third fourth place match well they of course want to get third when they play in madrid next week let's talk about that game yesterday fanatic fanatic versus h2k it went all the way to five games and it was when they went away from the Lee Sin pick the most on Huni and went to that Vlad for me that the tie definitely turned. Absolutely. What a crazy game series. Five games, everything you could have asked for. It was just perfectly played out. The first game, it was kind of like going even up until the mid game and then H2K just take it over. For me, surprising because I expected Fnatic to go all the way to a 3-0. But with that first win, I knew we got a series and we got a series. Huni on Vladimir, amazing. Yeah, one of the things that... Uh I am looking forward to see uh, if H2K can fix in their third place match. Is it seems like they lost their composure going into games four and five. When you play a series, you need to be able to be you need to be ready to play all five games. And uh, yeah, I'd really like to see them uh, be able to take the series the whole way next time. Yeah, good point. You definitely saw them falling apart bit by bit in for uh, game four and then in game five. I'd like to talk to you guys about how you have to adapt to a series like that. What do you do as a coach as you're in picks and bans and one of your players' roles is entirely banned out and you're left guessing? Uh, I think one of the things you need to have prepping in or going in is uh, having a diverse champion pool normally you need four or five but if you expect to be target banned sometimes you need to expand to seven or eight and if you're unable to do that and you notice both teams are banning out the same lane maybe you hold back a couple of the bands because you're expecting them to cover the top lane bands as well uh, but you just need to be ready to play a diverse amount of champions if you're going to be the one that's targeted yeah, absolutely. Yesterday we saw six top laners being taken out of the picture and that kind of smalls down the pool of Huni. He was trying to, to make the lease in work didn't work, and then he still had the Vladimir to fall back. If they would have adapted a bit earlier and maybe didn't ban three top laners themselves, it would have been a better picture. Yeah, we'll see what they come up with when they get to the finals. There's more on the line today than just a spot in the finals, though. The further a team goes in the playoffs, the more champion points they'll be uh, managing to rack up, and a championship points will determine one world qualifier from both EU and NA, and then the other two spots go to the winner of the summer split and the team who wins the regional qualifier tournament. So very important. Also that third, fourth play match uh, for H2K and whoever they end up playing. Now focusing on the present, today's match between SK Gaming and the Unicorns of Love will get underway shortly, but be sure to stay tuned after because when things wrap up here in Berlin, North American LCS will pick up right off where we leave off for the last semi-final match between Solo Mid and uh, Team Solo Mid and Team Impulse. And if it's anything like what we've seen yesterday between Cloud9 and Team Liquid, it's going to be a long day. Yeah, yesterday was crazy, but today, Two awesome games, one from Europe, one from America. And if you saw how Team Imports played, the curve was going straight up. And with Rush, one of the best junglers in the West, if you ask me, that's going to be a really interesting series. Yeah, I can't predict the winner because TSM is TSM. Uh, they're one of the best, I think they're the best team in North America, but Impact, uh, uh, 
is you know playing extremely well. I think TIP has a legitimate chance of beating them, so I can't call it. Either team that wins is like won't be a surprise to me. Yeah, let's hope for five games there and five games in this one as well, and then we are all set. But before we get to today's games, we want to check in with you guys. Tweet at LL Esports and tell us what is your favorite pro champion combo used in a playoff so far and why? So which pro playing which champion? Dentist? Yeah, for me, I got two. I got to stick with my own series, so I'm going to go one for Copenhagen Wolves and one for HK. First one, Young Bug on Hecarim. He wasn't known to be a carry player, but in that games on that Hecarim, he was stepping up huge. He was trying his best to win the game, and I think he was amazing on the champion. And the second one, Ryu on Zed. As an LCK fan, you can't forget the Zed on Ryu. Yeah, and uh, mine is definitely Kikus on Shaco. I'm a Shaco main myself. I love the champion, and uh, he played it pretty well. Uh, and one of the other things as well is his team really worked well with him. They, they knew exactly what they needed out of the Shaco. They played the split push correctly. And uh, yeah, I just really enjoyed the game. Even if we we're on the wrong side, I really enjoyed the game. Yeah, I really stand up for you of giving some praise to that Shaco and that Kikus. And as always, be sure to tweet your answers at LL Esports using the hashtag LCS so we can talk over your responses with our analysts here later today, and I'm sure they'll have a thing or two to say. For now, though, it is time to dial in on the match at hand. The first seed, 15-3 SK Gaming versus the LCS-owned Cinderella story, the Unicorns of Love. Starting with the lineup for the SK Gaming as they are on the blue side for Game 1 with Freddy122, Sven Skaren, Fox, Forgiven, and Rated, and their coach, Inner Flame, dominating the season so far, only dropping three games. And, um... Freddy said in the intro, yeah, people want to pigeonhole us maybe and say we only have one style and maybe just people want to moan. But... It's not to moat about. They just play the way they play just incredibly well. They're one three one. They get forgiven ahead. They get their objectives. It's not moaning. It's actually more praise coming from our side. Yeah, and they obviously they play the one three one really well. Uh, it was unstoppable at the beginning of the season. They were just rolling over everyone. And then in their game against us, they pulled out a Candarina mid, a very good in team fights, and they showed that they were able to play it well. Uh, I think had we been more prepared and more ready for the Katarina, it could have been a closer game. But it just showed that they're they're willing to pull out unpredictable picks. They're willing to play a different style other than one three one. And uh, they're successful with it so far. Yeah, for me personally, it's not moaning, it's praising. If you got that one style and you just played out that perfect, there's nothing much to add. Just roll with it. Yeah, absolutely. If we dial in on a little bit of the uh, individual players on that team, obviously we always talk about forgive when we talk about how solid... Um, uh, Freddy is in that top lane. Maybe turning our attention to Fox, you mentioned Katarina Fox is one of those players that you don't, it's not the first thing that comes to mind when you think of the strength of SK Gaming. He kind of goes under the ropes but still gets the job done. For me, Fox is one of the most underrated players in the whole split. He's the mid laner that has to work with the least resources out of almost everyone. He's going to sacrifice a lot of farm for the other lanes, especially for the AD carry, and he still makes it work. He single-handedly carried on so many games and on so many champions, especially his LeBlanc. That guy is just amazing, if you ask me. Yeah, there isn't much else to say. Like the, He plays extremely well. He has a lot of limited resources, and he always shows up. He's a wonderful player. Yeah, a lot of good things about that team, and they're going to have to pull out all the staffs because they're up against the decidedly more magical Unicorns of Love today with Visit Chachi, Kikis, Power of Evil, Vardax, Hillisong, and their coach, Sheepy. They played you guys last week well, and uh, they gave a master class in adapting to a best of five. Honestly, gave you guys a run for your money, and yeah, just kudos to them because that's the thing we praised coming into them. They can play off meta picks as we are joined by a unicorn himself, and he made it work. Yeah, no, it's really difficult to play against unicorns love because we spend the whole week scrimming against uh, h2k copenhagen wolves and you know they they play their champions and we had a, a bit of success with the compositions we're running but when they start playing things like udir and shaka you can just throw all the practice out the window so uh if i was sk i'd be a bit worried you know uh we'll have to see if they're lactose intolerant or not <laughs> well as we were joined by a, a unicorn seemingly Tell me about what your vision on that series, uh, especially Hillisong, he turned out to yeah. be our MVP. And I think he also lined out a lot of the pick and ban strategy for them because he was so good on Morgana. My brain tells me SK, <laughs> but my heart tells me the Unicorns. <laughs> I just love that bunch of people. Like, they're crazy with their picks, they're crazy with their players. They're a bunch of nice guys, and I'm all in for this. I want to see five games today, and I want to see the Unicorns passing by. All right, well, we'll see how it turns out. How do you think Hillisong is going to do in this one? Um, he never he never was the MVP in the weeks before, and then it seems like he's taking the pressure and going to a new level. Hillisong, for me, was the MVP in the last week because he he was just amazing on Thresh. He was supposed to be a one-trick pony on the champion, then he showed up with a Morgana. Just huge vision control, skill shots, just amazingly overall. And I don't think that Asuka is going to ban any one of those support champions, so he's going to get one of the two, and then he's going to perform. 
It, yeah, and I think uh, like watching the VOD review in preparation for the series, his Annie play just added an extra dimension uh, to their their win conditions. Uh, he, like his Annie play itself was a win condition, so we had to remove that, and then we just lose to his Morgana. And uh, when he steps up like this during the playoffs, it just really shows the type of player he is. This guy is clutch. <laughs> yeah, and especially when you're mentioning the uh, support player, and you have to start out banning on his champions against a team like the Unicorns of Love, who obviously have bannable things in both the mid lane and the top lane and the jungle, although you can't really go for that. So what is your vision on like how the pick and bans will go? I would say that in a standard game, SK Gaming would almost always win against the Unicorns of Love, but it's going to be so important if they try and predict what they will pick or ban out. It's not the route to go for SK Gaming. Yes. Oh, you can go ahead. Yeah, two things you can do. Either you can ban the Shaco and the Udia right away from the get-go in game one just to deny that, but I wouldn't do that myself because there's a lot of all the Gouda prepared. So if you ban those two, he's coming up with something great, Vega jungle or something like that. <laughs> so you can't really ban them out. The picks and bans in this game, if you're SK, it's going to be tough. You can take out the Shaco, you can take out the Syndra maybe for Power of Evil, but you can also just ban out one lane or just ban meta picks. I don't know. Like if I if I would be the coach, I didn't know what to do. Yeah, I really have no idea what the ban either. Like, I think the Annie ban is good, but then we, he's shown that he's able to play other supports. Uh, I think you just go in, maybe try to find a strategy that you want to play if you're SK. Find the champions that you like, the composition that you want to play, and then ban the champions that are problematic to that strategy. Uh, and then, obviously, from going from game one, you can see what they want to do and then adjust accordingly. And then if you're on uh, ULL side, I, I would try to put Forgiven onto Caitlyn, ban maybe two or three AD carries to put them on Caitlyn, and then find the champions in your pool that are strong against Caitlyn, because he's shown a liking to that champion. He likes to pick it when the enemy takes Annie, and maybe you can find a way to put him on Caitlyn, take Annie, and then just have a composition that's really strong against Caitlyn. All right, something else uh, we can look at is Picks Kikis. We've mentioned it, of course, before already. He's going to be crazy. He can pull out anything in that jungle. He's actually part of our featured matchup. We have Kikis versus Svenskar, and I think, because Kikis is always coming out with those crazy picks and then carrying or influencing the game in some way. But Svenskar, what a fantastic jungler also, who also kind of flies under the radar but gets the job done. Yeah, absolutely. Like, for a year, he's been one of the best junglers, if not the best jungler in the West, especially in Europe. And... That guy just screams early game aggression all over the place. He's highly mechanical skilled. He's all over the place, going into the enemy's jungle, just hunting for his prey, and he's just stacking it up. K D A. Everything. <laughs> he's a monster. He's my player to watch for. All right, yeah, and, and definitely kick us. The, the guy is diverse. His, obviously, he's shown he can play Udyr, he can play Shaco. I have no idea what this guy is going to play. He's going to be flexible. If the team wants to play a, a different style of uh, strategy, like a different win condition that isn't in the meta, this guy can bend over backwards to make it happen. So, uh, we're you're going to de definitely keep a close eye on what he's picking today. All right. Foregoing maybe picks and bends and the crazy things, is maybe SK Gaming so strong in what they do and the way they play the game that in the end it doesn't matter what the Unicorns of Love pick? No, I don't think that. I don't think that at all. Like, Unicorns is a team that can adapt in the series. We saw that against Gambit. And Unicorns also a team that's going to come up with some crazy stuff. And if you're SK and just playing your game down, you can definitely throw them over. And unicorn, if not unicorns, who else? Yeah, and having experience playing against unicorns, they make you play your style. Like, we had compositions, we wanted to play them a certain way, they didn't care. They forced skirmishes. We had to skirmish with them. And if they're able to, you know, find through their studies and exploit in uh, SK's gaming style, uh, I'm sure that they'll uh, be successful. You know, I, I, it's, it's either going to be uh, SK playing their strategy and uh, uh, making it happen, or UOL is going to find that cheese pick, that cheese composition, and they're going to make SK play their style. Mm -hmm. What about the uh, mental aspect of coming into this game? Obviously, the Unicorns of Love, they are riled in a little bit in the playoffs. They played that quarterfinal. They, they went all the way to four games, and they made that work. SK Gaming, they've had two weeks to kind of scope everything out. So how will that have influenced both teams? I don't think that it will influence them at all. Like... Just by talking to the unicorns, they're just all calm, relaxed guys. And they are realistic about what their chances are today. They are prepared. They, are, they have a lot of self-esteem. And they're going to try to make it work. I don't think that has any influence. If any, they have more practice because they practice against Gambit. <laughs> yeah, no, I think the extra week of playing is going to be helpful. The, the edge SK has is they've been able to sit back and watch all of the regions. They've been able to see, you know, TP Smite uh, start to evolve. And when you're uh, practicing for a quarterfinal match, the last couple of days you can't really innovate. But I can assume that they've had enough time to practice, find the compositions they want. And uh, they could pull out some crazy stuff here. Yeah, pull out some crazy stuff as well. Let's hope so. Before we head to the caster desk for picks and bands, we're going to hop on stage where Pyrotechnics is standing by to talk strategy with the minds behind these squads. Thank you very much, Shox. I am, of course, joined by the Unicorns of Love, Sheepy, and SK's Inner Flame. First of all, gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Good to be here. It's good to be here, too. 
Thank you once again. So guys, I want to get right into this one. Sheepy, uh, I feel like they said it best on the analyst desk. This is a Cinderella story of a team. You guys came up through the promotion tournament and now you have made it into the semifinals. You are one series away from going to the final match in Madrid. What does this mean for you as a team? Um, it's really, really important for us. Um, we've been through all this struggle and it was never like an easy road. So I just think that my players deserve, deserve it a lot from the way they have fought like through the whole Challenger series and the LCS. And yeah, whatever happens today, we are just really happy to be playing here and yeah, in front of the crowd and it's just amazing. Well said, and you know, you've definitely got quite a number of fans in that crowd behind you there. So, also now over to you, Inner Flame. I want to ask you guys about prepping for these unicorns, because the last time you guys met, it was back in week six, the unicorns did beat you guys. And how do you think, since then, you've taken a look at the way that they've, the way that they've played the game, the way that they've changed, and how you're preparing for them? Um, so, like, the reason we lost last time was uh, generally because we were in, like, a pretty big slump. But um, I'm not like discrediting them, but I think like it contributed as well, like heavily. Um, I think we're ready for whatever they can throw at us today. I think if they like choose something abstract, uh, then they allow us to play what we want, and I don't think anyone wants to do that. Well, I think called it Gouda. Maybe it'll be a different variety of cheese this time around. Uh, Sheepy. How about SK Gaming? You guys played them back in week six. You managed to get the best of them. How do you think they've changed as a team since then? Admittedly, you know, there was a slump, but now things have definitely changed. They've ended out on the top. How do you prepare for that? Um, usually we just take it as any other best of five series. We try to look what they are playing and understanding the enemy is the same as understanding yourself. Um, at some point, we just do the normal schedule, uh, best of five training, and then we just look out if they play anything specifically which we want to counter. And it's, I think with this K, relatively hard and easy because they are really good at what they play, but it's relatively hard to counter as well because um, they're just playing a strong game from what we see. So we try to see whose muscles are stronger and who can strengthen up. There we go. Some respect there. I like it. So, Interflame, you guys, you've had a couple weeks off. You've been prepping. I'm sure you've been watching the way the Unicorns played off against Gambit. Anything particular you've been preparing for with regards to that in the time you've had extra? Um, I don't think you can prepare like specifically for anything without like being leaked something or whatever. But I think um, it's more about preparing for the like play style that they want to do, um, like a lot of follow up of a kind of like Syndra stun or like a thresh burning. So um, they usually like pick around, like to pick to just make picks all over the map, and like they don't hesitate, which is like what's really good about them. Is like if one person lands a hook, they'll all like go. They won't even like think; they'll just go. So it's like kind of hard to yeah sorry it's like it's kind of hard to prepare prepare for generally but uh, yeah I mean it's it's we're more ready for the play style than uh, the actual like champions they're gonna pick because uh, I don't think anyone would have seen like a shake or <laughs> I don't think so indeed but uh, well maybe we'll be seeing that maybe we'll be seeing something different once again gentlemen thank you very much best of luck in your match today you guys can go ahead and join your teams and now. We're going to go ahead and send it back to the analyst desk once again for a little bit of extra discussion before we get into the games. Thank you very much, Pyra. We're working on a small technical issue on stage, uh, but it shouldn't be long until we get into the game. So we can uh, talk a little bit more and preview this match as for what the coaches said as well. And it was very similar when um, Pyra asked the question about the picks. Inner Flame said, oh, well, everything they have prepared, which is very similar to what you ended up saying. And I feel like that's the right way to go because in the end you can't prepare anyway. Well, yeah, like we sat down and we pulled up the champions on the League of Legends client, the big list, and we sat down and talked for about 30, 45 seconds, okay, what is this champion? What lane does he go in? And how does he work with the style? And uh, it helps a bit, but honestly, like when someone's ready to pull out a champion that you haven't seen before, play a style you haven't seen before, it's really going to challenge you to do the critical thinking on the fly. So we're going to have to see if SK is ready to adapt. Yeah, as, jo as Jordan pointed out earlier today, Unicorns is a team that will force you to play their game. They don't play along the game that the opponents uh, play. They force you to play their own. They go for the scrimmages. They go for those crazy teamfight situations where you usually don't expect them. And SK is a team that is calculated. SK goes into the game with a game plan. They know what they want to play. They know when they want to start. They know everything about how it's going to be. And if you're unicorns and you're just going to throw a fist in the middle of their preparation, maybe you can throw them over. 
I think uh, Unicorns and Fnatic are kind of similar in that way, that they press the go button and they go. But in my opinion, Fnatic can control it a little bit better and maybe turn it off when they shouldn't take a skirmish. I think that might be a, a risk for the Unicorns of Love in this one. If you go too far once versus SK Gaming, they are just going to tie it down and, and get the advantage of that. But we had similar situations in the game series against Gambit Gaming. There were situations where Gambit clearly didn't want to fight. And still, Unicorns somehow managed, whether it be with a teleport, whether it be with a support, who comes from the flank, they have those situations where they just force you to fight. Just remember the, the quarter kill of Oriana. That was the game-changing and almost a serious-changing moment in that fight. Yep. You didn't want to take that fight, and still Unicorns managed to do it by brute force. And SK is a team that is not safe for that. Right. And I think one of the things that you'll look at with teams is they'll, they'll line up the map, they'll look at the objectives, call the next objective, and then they'll try to find opportunities to fight. Unicorn's level just fight any time. They mm -hmm. see an opportunity, they'll just go. It doesn't matter if Dragon's up in a minute, two minutes, if the tower, they need to rotate to a tower. No, they see a guy walking out and uh, out of position, they'll just go. So it's really difficult to play against because you always have to be on your toes. You know, every second, am I walking over a ward? Am I walking somewhere I shouldn't? Because they're just ready to jump on you. Yeah, and they thrive on chaos, and it's quite the opposite for SK Gaming. They thrive on that calculated game. I'm happy you mentioned that, uh, of course, those four kills that uh, Unicorns of Love ended up getting in the bottom lane, which, of course, you can't foresee that it will end up being a quadro kill for Oriana in the mid game. It might as well just been a double kill. Uh, let's talk about maybe Power of Evil a little bit. We haven't touched on him and we have touched on Fox. Uh, inconsistency, was, inconsistency was the name of the game for the Unicorns of Love in this split and a lot of that hinged on how Power of Evil does or doesn't do. Yeah, absolutely. If you look at the wins that Unicorns of Love had, whenever they won a game, Power of Evil was the one carrying them. Power of Evil was the one having a huge impact on his lane. He was the one getting the, the lead, the gold lead, against his opponent in the mid lane. And then he just snowballed off of that. Getting kills, making picks, putting out huge amounts of, of damage in the team fights. Whenever they lost the game, Power didn't have the impact that he maybe should have had. So this game series will actually be a lot about Power of Evil. Because he, if he's ready to lead his team into the battle, then it can go either way. Yeah. Uh the Unicorns of Love have, uh, I think I've said this before, a few win conditions, and one of the win conditions is Power of Evil setting up pickoffs. Uh, they like to play around Dragons, and uh, uh, Vizichachi is really good at uh, you know winning the team the Dragon fights, but if Dragon's not up, it's it's Power of Evil you know, uh, sitting in a pink warded brush, uh, hunting around the map, looking to pick someone off. And when he gets on those champions like LeBlanc, uh, and we've seen him play tons of Orianna games, uh, it, it's really up to him. That he controls the pace of the game. Uh, when he's on, he's a monster, and I really hope to see him show up this series. Yeah, uh, and actually wanted to touch on that as well. We saw him playing the Kog'Maw versus you guys, and of course we know he loves this Casio. Um, I still love to see Power of Evil on champions like a Cinder, like a LeBlanc, and just go in and go ham immediately. Why do you think he strayed away from that a couple of times? And as you say, he wants to control the game, but for a team as Unicorns, I don't think you should try and bank on going late game with an Orianna or a Kog'Maw because your style is to get fights early. The Orianna makes sense, and even the Kog'Maw in a, in, a, in a slight regard. We played a lot of them in scrimmages, and they had games where they made the Kog'Maw mid work. But in the series against Gambit, and whenever they played it in LCS, it just didn't have the impact that you want to have from your mid laner, especially if it's a carry mid laner like Power of Evil. Today, I want to see him on that Cassiopeia if it's open. I want to see him on that Syndra if it's open. He's got the skills, he's got the mechanics to do it, he's got the knowledge to do it, and he just has to show it. Orianna, on the other hand, it's a damage control champion, but still a strong one for them. Yeah, and I think it's just like the Kogma and the, those styles of champions are them just uh, diversifying their play styles. Uh, I think it's smart because if you end up in a spot where you know your pickoffs aren't working, your your dragon control just isn't working, you can always fall back to playing a Kogma type champion. Uh, but yeah, like uh, Dentist said, uh, you want to see him on those at uh, Syndra. You want to get that pick off. You want to see him on the uh, personally. I want to see him on LeBlanc as well. Just uh, those playmaking champions allow him to create the opportunities for his team. I think that's where they're going to be most successful. Yeah, much like the mid lane matchup yesterday, it would be great to see both Fox and Power of Evil just go head-to-head -head in a very, very fast and heavy matchup. Now, with all the speculation on how easily SK will be able to adapt to this best of five, let's hear from the Unicorns of Love themselves on their signature meta-breaking style. Both well, since the start of my like, career, I always played what I thought is strong. I like, always had in the back of my mind that this can be strong if I have like right conditions, right setups, and so I was always like one that wasn't really afraid of trying to pull something out. We just look for our champion strength and then we actually wait for a perfect scenario to happen in the pick and ban phase where we can pick it. Well, okay. Okay, that's a new one. The man bear pick of Udia has been locked in. 
I was practicing Uder, like spamming in the solo queue, uh, practicing in screams, and it's really great versus like team comms that don't have sustained damage and there's like, a lot of tanks. Do it! Do it! He's going in! Flash! Bear! Slap! Udia is on the board! Like, there is always a purpose of picks in the meta, so when we go for these off-meta picks, let's say for a Shaco, then we generally tend to go for a speed pushing style. We just try it out in scrims, and if it works out, we, we are not afraid to even pick it into the LCS. Whoa, 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 whoa. Shaco is locked in for the first time in 2015. The craziness is continuing. I have like 150 games overall throughout like the last season of Shaco games, and I know what it's strong against and what's strong with. I don't think uh, just because we are one game away, we can't really afford on playing anything weird because we really wanted to win the fourth game, and we are sure that with this champion select, we can just go onto the semis. In their debut split of the 2015 season, yeah! Unicorns advance to the top four. I think a lot of the teams are afraid or maybe they just don't want to waste time on practicing something that might not work. But in our team, uh, we take our time to test picks, theory craft about this, like strategize. We have a lot of trust in each, each other with it. Yeah, there is never really a thought that this won't work. So if Kiki says, I'm confident in playing Shaco right now, then we said, okay, let's go for it. We trust into the person's idea and we try to make the best out of it. I trust in my teammates in their like picks because they do the same in, like with me. I have my signature champions and when we tried the Cassiori combination, they were really open to it and it was really su successful. We did see Power of Evil get given the omen of death and the unicorns of love come out with a fantastic team fight. Um, the meta is constantly changing and uh, it gives just new opportunities for other champions to rise as well. I think it's still possible for us to surprise enemies because there's always a way to find new stuff that's gonna work if we have the guts to do it. So, for example, versus SK, we still have some things we want to play against them and put them off guard. So, yeah, it's definitely achievable.